G'day all, Wayne here, Wombat Models. Welcome back. Today I'm going to have a look at a question that was posed by Mark Batson over at HobbyDude 007. That was, what tools do you use on every build? Let's go over to the bench and have a look. So of course we have our A3 cutting mat, but we've also got our icky sticky single edge sprue cutters. So these come with a cover just to protect the, t the blades. These are really nice, clean cutting, well weighted set of nippers for more heavy duty generic work so just cutting up general bits of sprue and the likes i've got these old ones i've got no idea where i got them from had them for ages then we have our icky sticky hobby knife set so it comes with two handles a set of 30 number two blades so the icky sticky knife is the one i use for the majority of my cutting work but i also do have a number of other knives, different blade types and sizes, um, particularly one there that I use for cutting PE. Then we have our ubiquitous razor saw. Can't do without that for cutting off uh, large chunks of plastic or when you're doing resin, cutting off the pore blocks, for example. A pair of scissors. So these are used for cutting uh, decal sheets. Uh, so cutting out the individual decals and markings. And lastly, we have our icky sticky pin vise and tungsten micro drill bit set. And so we've got the pin vise there, and of course, three sets of drills the 0.1 to 1, 1.1 to 2, and the 2.1 to 3 millimeter. Okay, so first up, we have the SMS ceramic scraper. So this comes with a ceramic blade, uh, nice and safe, you can't cut yourself on that. It comes with a spare one when you buy it. Uh, these ceramic scrapers are perfect for cleaning up uh, mold separation lines or seams on parts and can also be used for cleaning up some of the uh, sprue dibs that are left over. But it's a really useful tool that I use on everything. Uh, then we have our Tamiya Plastic Scriber 2. So this is a rebranded Alpha Scriber. So have your scribing blade, uh, you've got a spare blade in the handle there. So it comes in really useful for rescribing panel lines. Then we've got uh, files. Now, this set of needle files, I've got no idea how long I've had them or where I got them from. Uh, they come in a range of sizes and shapes. Uh, they're really useful for cleaning up um, sprue nibs uh, and also great for cleaning up the little leftover nibs from where you've cut uh, PE off the fret and just for general, uh, if you want a nice flat surface when you're cleaning up your parts. So that's the files. And then for general sanding, uh, use basically just emery boards, nail files that you can get from your, your local craft shop or price line or likes. And I really like this one, which is a multi-grade sander that you can pick up again from your uh, beauty supply places. So it has multiple grades. So you have step one is coarse, step two is medium, step three fine. And it goes down to four is conditioning, five is smoothing, six is buffing, and seven is polishing. So they come up really useful for just general sanding. They're a little bit soft, so they've got a little bit of give, which is good. Uh, also, obviously, use sandpaper wet and dry. So I just picked up um, some of the icky sticky wet and dry. So it goes for a range of grades right up here, 15,000 grit. So that's really useful. And also recently picked up the icky sticky sanding sponge spit so that comes in a range of grits from 180 all the way up to 3000 grit so I'll be using them a lot and also another recent pickup is the icky sticky glass file sets now they come in two sizes so you've got your large and your small so three grits so you've got a fine a medium and a super fine so these are fantastic they're nice and solid so they give you a really good flat surface and come in nice little protective carry cases. So again, another great pickup for cleaning up your parts. And for ages, I just used some generic tweezers that you pick up again from supermarkets or the likes, just nice cheap ones. They did the job for a while. But a while back, I was lucky enough to pick up a set of the icky sticky uh, nine piece precision tweezers uh, come in the bag. So yeah, you got nine sets of tweezers, different sizes, tips, shapes, and the likes. So again, a really good set there. So 
There's types there that cover pretty much all your needs and they come in that lovely little protective case. Then use a range of clips and clamps to hold things together from you know, fold back clips or bulldog clips, rubber bands. Uh, pick these ones up online somewhere. So they come in really useful. And when painting, obviously got the old alligator clips just on a piece of bamboo skewer just for holding parts and getting them up there while you're painting them. Now, like a lot of modelers, uh, getting a bit older and my eyesight's getting a bit dodgy. Certainly not what it used to be. So for seeing things, I've got a range of reading glasses in various strengths. But also, of course, got the OptiVisor. So a lot of modelers use these. Obviously, it's got the light there. Lenses uh, replaceable in various grades. So it comes in invaluable, as I said, when you get that little bit older and your eyesight just gets that little bit more dodgy. And when it comes to sticking stuff together, well, we've got the staple of most modelers, the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin, a uh, fantastic adhesive there, and also still use the old Rebel Contactor Professional. Uh, it has its applications, although not a lot of people seem to like using it these days. Uh, when it comes to um, superglue or CA, so I've got the icky sticky range, so I've got thin, medium, thick, also got the rubber toughened black CA, and of course we have the CA activator, and if you screw things up totally, we've got the CA debonder. And when it comes to sticking things like uh, clear parts and transparencies, use the old Aquadia PVA wood glue. And got a range of tape, so got some of the uh, Tamiya tape in various sizes, but also have the icky sticky tape set. So it comes in the dispenser, just keep it upside down to keep all the dust out. So it has a range of sizes there. So use that for a lot of um, you know, detail taping and masking and then infill and just for generic stuff, we've just got the old generic purple tape from the, uh, the local uh, big green shed. Of course, Good old blue tack, uh, fantastic for holding little bits together, just tacking them when you're testing parts, but also it can be used, uh, you know, rolled out into ribbons when you're doing um, camouflage for painting and markings. And then for uh, decal adhesives or agents, uh, to me a mark fit, which is good for those really tough decals because it's a fairly uh, hot or harsh solution. And of course, I've got the Mr. Hobby, Mr. Mark Setter and Mr. Mark Softer. And when it comes to painting, uh, I've got a range of brushes, various brands, various sizes, you know, running from, you know, like aughts, double aughts, triple aughts, five aughts, ones. Uh, I've got some brushes there from Icky Sticky. Got some of the old Humbrol ones that you get in the uh, Humbrol sets or Airfix sets. Uh, I've got some uh, just art advantage to some small brushes in various sizes and shapes. You know, even got a makeup brush there that we can use for various effects. But when it comes to airbrushing, uh, I've got three airbrushes on the go. So first up we have, so the SMS Dragon Air Blue, which is fitted with a 0.2 mil needle. So use that for all the really fine work. Then we have uh, what was my old workhorse for a long time. So that's my Hasang HS80, just a cheap uh, Chinese airbrush, but 0.3 mil needle. Been working great for me for quite a long time. So still use that one. And recently just picked up another cheapy airbrush. So this one is a Walmart AB180. Uh, it comes with a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 needle sets. And I've currently got that one fitted with a 0.5. So that's my heavy duty one. So there are uh, three airbrushes that I use on pretty much everything. And if you give me a sec, I'll just grab my compressor. Okay, so it's a little difficult to get the compressor up on the bench. But uh, there you can see it. So... Uh, just a cheap one that I was given by my boss, who's also a modeler, uh, when he upgraded his airbrush uh, and a compressor set. So it's a uh, Workmate model number 53633. Uh, no tank on that one, but uh, it does have regulator and water filter. And as you can see, three of the feet are broken off. And then just lastly, when we're spraying, of course, we use our mask because you've got to be safe, especially when you're doing uh, some of the more volatile paints that are around. Well, there you go. They're the tools that I use on every build. How about you? 
why don't you make a video and show us what you use? Anyway, that's it from me for this week. Uh, don't forget, like, leave a comment, I'll read and respond to all of them. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit the bell if you want to get notifications of upcoming videos. Yeah, that's it. See you later. Bye.